All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Roy McQueen from NC Tech Lucians. Okay, guys, picking up from where we left off, talking about jQuery Mobile's form elements. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, um, the next element of discussion are sliders. A slider is ideal for numeric values inside of a range. So let me just show you. We're doing just like we've been doing in the previous videos. You know, create a page and a link to that page in our forms page menu. Page, yeah. All right, and you see here, to use a slider, we just define an HTML5 input control with the type attribute set to range. You can also set the min and max values plus uh, the stop values, the step values, excuse me. And right here on this other one, you can set a theme for the handle and also set one for the track. You know, the track is the, the thing that the slider slides on. And we can also have a tooltip on the slider, you know, which is which is which is pretty neat. And you also got um, you also got the range slider that offers two handles uh, to set a minimum and a maximum value. So that's pretty that's pretty neat to use too. We still need to cover the topic of theme, so don't even worry about that. I know I keep mentioning that, but that's, I promise you, that's coming up. So let's go ahead and run it. Now, moving on to the next, which is the flip toggle switch now this is similar to a checkbox in functionality but you know they're nothing to like so it's a, what it is it's a selector for boolean values true or false on and off you know what you need to do you just need to set the data row attribute to flip switch and it also needs a select element with only two options as children First is the off value and then the true value. Now you see the one below, it's inside a field container and what I did, I set it to have no corners uh, and or disable the switch. So let's go ahead and run this and uh, take a look. All right, next is the select menu, which are just typical form controls to select one or multiple options from a pop-up list. Now, every mobile browser supports selects, so you don't have to really worry about the compatibility for that. In the first element, we have a basic select with four options. Then in the second one, I added a few attributes. First, I move the icon to the left. Uh, then disable the second option. And pre-selected the sixth option. So that's how you do that right there. In the third select menu I created, um, I, we, we have a vertical control group. You'll notice now we have the menu inside of a field set element with the data role uh, attribute set to control group. And for the last one, it's the same thing except we have except uh, we have to specify the data type as horizontal.
All right, moving on. <clears throat> we moving along, guys. So look, all right, what we got? All right, moving on to the next. Radio inputs. Okay, we all know about radio inputs and we all love those. Now, they're used to provide a list of options where only a single option can be selected. And to create a set of radio buttons, you just add an input with the type attribute set to radio. Now on the second set of radio buttons that I got here, we set the data row attribute to control group. Now this, this will visually integrate multiple radio buttons into a vertically grouped button set. So that's also good to use. <clears throat> and to make a horizontal button set, you add the data type attribute equal to horizontal. Uh, and also notice I disabled a radio button. Okay, so for the last one to cover uh, for the forms element section is the classic checkbox. We all love checkboxes, don't we? I think. I mean, you know, it's easy to make one. And all you got to do is just add an input with the type set to checkbox, you know, the attribute. So, uh, and you also need to have a corresponding label. If the input isn't wrapped in its corresponding label, just be sure to set the attribute of the label to match the ID of the input. So then, they then they'll be semantically associated. <clears throat> the second set of checkboxes, we put an icon to the right and disable one checkbox. And now for this last one, checkboxes can also be used for grouped button sets where more than one button can be selected at once. So that's also another option that you have there. So let's go ahead and you know, check that out. You already know how to style the anchor link as a button. I showed you that earlier. And you just do that by setting the role attribute. And now we need to cover a form input button. So, and all it is is an input element with the type set to either button, submit, or reset. And notice how I put this inside of a form element. Now don't, don't get confused right here, you know, because everything that we just discussed will usually go inside, normally go inside a form element. So, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you get it. So anyways, um, our last button that we created is a button out of an icon, which is pretty sweet. Uh, now this is always round by default. And that's pretty much it for the form widgets right there. Um, now we still got a whole lot of widgets to cover. Well, not that many, but we still got some more to cover. So in the next video, I'm going to go through all the other widgets that we missed. And um, hopefully I won't bore you guys too much. You know what I'm saying? So it's time for me to order a pizza, you know, and um, watch the game or something. And uh, I don't know. Shoot. But I'll see you guys then. Later.